So there's some new information on the page. You may not be familiar at all with the polynomial brothers, Taylor and McLaurin, but you will be. Not today so much, but in the future for sure. And the relevant prior knowledge to what we're looking at is spelled out here and in the work you came up with. So the work you came up with looks something like this. You found the first derivative to get the slope at one. You know that when x equals one, y is zero, you can write the equation of the tangent line like so. However, I'm gonna change this just a little bit. For our purposes, I'm gonna write it like that. So you may have noticed I've included zero. We don't normally include zero for reasons that we've talked about extensively and make intuitive sense, I think. And there are a few important things that we're gonna use to guide us forward into this new, for us, but very old math that is actually used to this very day. So there are two really important understandings that lead us to the conclusion that this tangent line is accurate. The first one is the tangent line and the curve, the natural log of X, share the same output, the same function value at one, and they share the same slope at one. So long as I choose X values very, very close to one, this tangent line is going to be pretty accurate. It's gonna be a decent approximation. It's not gonna be the best, but it's gonna be pretty close. And you may have been wondering this exact question for the entirety of this class. Okay, great. So what happens though at two and five and seven? Because I don't know if you've noticed this, you can type on your calculator, the natural log of two, and it will give you a value. And the natural log of 10, and it will give you a value. The natural log of seven, sure. Natural log of 1,012, absolutely. It will give you those values. How does it do it? Does it have those values memorized? I mean, that's possible, right? It is a computer. Who knows what computers can do? Like they can operate toasters and microwaves and jetliners, and I'm sure they could store a bunch of information. But that's not actually what your calculator does. Your calculator approximates it. Gasp, I know. You've been lied to this entire time. You've been told that the calculator gives you the true decimal value, but it's actually an approximation. Now it's a very, very good, a very, very precise approximation, but it is an approximation nonetheless. Now it would never matter the error in the approximation for your purposes because it's accurate to like 16 decimal places. And let's be real, how often do you need 16 decimal places of accuracy for doing anything authentic? Not very often. Like think about all the times in science class doing significant digits. Blech. And you needed 16 decimal places of accuracy to do sig figs. Probably never would be my guess. So that's a lot of words. Let me switch over here and show you a picture. So here's a picture created on Desmos. So looks like a line, right? Which is good because we made a line, but it's actually two things. And notice I'm zoomed in super duper far, like I'm at 0.995. And if I start zooming out to a more normal thing, we can see that, hey, in red, we've got the natural log curve and in blue, we've got our tangent line. But why can't we use a tangent parabola. Mm. Check out this tangent parabola, y'all. Look at it. It's a little bit better further away from one, isn't it? A little bit better, okay? So that's pretty much the idea that's gonna get us started here. So the idea is, ooh, tangent parabola better than tangent line. Guess what's better than a tangent parabola? Yeah, you guessed it, a tangent cubic. Guess what's better than a tangent cubic? 
a tangent quartic fourth power. Guess what's better than a tangent fourth power? A tangent fifth power, a quintic. Better than a fifth power, a sixth power. Better than a sixth power. I mean, why stop? Why not get all of the powers? Let's get all of the powers. Then we can have all of the accuracy that we need. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're gonna be looking at. But first training royals before we can actually start to run. So let me swap back to here. Okay. So tangent line makes perfect sense. We've been doing it for what feels like decades, right? Decades, okay. So how do we expand this into a tangent parabola? That's what you may be wondering. Okay, so how does that work? Well, the tangent parabola and I'm gonna future protect us here. Also have the same Y value, Y prime value, Y double prime value, et cetera. And that, that represents our in. That is how we're gonna make something out of this. So let's talk notation. We talked about this before. Tangent line approximation. Here's what we're doing. Our parabola approximation is going to take that tangent line and build on it. And then for that matter, we continue in that vein for further things. So what I wanna spend some time with you here today is where does this F double prime of C come from? Cause it makes a certain amount of intuitive sense, but we need a little bit more understanding of that in order to proceed. How's that sound? Sounds good. Great, glad to hear it. Okay, so teensy bit more notation. Okay, I think it makes a certain amount of sense. We're using subscripts to indicate what's going on. Subscripts, so P sub one, first degree, which is a line. P sub two, second degree, which is a parabola. P sub three would be third degree. P sub four would be fourth degree, et cetera, et cetera. So, 
P sub one of X, the line uses the function value at C plus the first derivative of the function at the same value times the quantity of X minus C. And that looks exactly like what I set up for you up here. So these are the same thing, right? The only difference is up here, when we first did this, we did it with actual numbers. Down here, we're just doing it with the abstract notation. So we have some idea of how to proceed. So P sub two of X continues this pattern. So it's the line at the same spot plus the parabola And the question is, why does that value have to be F double prime of C, which it does. So that's again, what we're trying to answer. And to answer that, we use the same information that we've already said. So we need to have the same slope. That means we need to have the same derivative. So what does that mean needs to happen? Well, what that mean, or what that, means that we need to have happen here is we need to have the first derivative of p sub two, that has to equal f prime of x. Similarly, the second derivative has to equal the second derivative, right? That follows this trend. So if I literally take the derivatives here, what happens? So P sub two prime, F of C is a constant. plus F prime of C times the quantity of one minus zero, plus I have A times two times the quantity of X minus C, chain rule one minus zero. I'm gonna simplify before I take the next derivative. So I have F prime of C plus 2a times the quantity of x minus c. When I take the second derivative, f prime, the derivative is zero. I have 2a times the quantity of one minus zero, which is 2a. So this tells me The second derivative is 2a, and that has to equal the second derivative. So 2a equals f double prime of c, which means a is one half times f double prime of c. Now this is going to be tremendously interesting moving forwards, this one half. But for right now, we're just gonna go with it being one half. All right. So when we write our P sub two, 
we know we're going to need the function value at C. We know we're going to need the first derivative at C, right? But what we're going to need here in this spot is this. This right here is going to give us a tangent parabola. So we've already got this. We already know from before, if we're using f of x is natural log of x at x equals one, we know what f of c is. So f of one, that's zero. We know what f prime of one is. That's one, we did that before. We don't know what f double prime of c is because we don't know what f double prime of x is. So f double prime of x is the derivative of one over x, which is negative one over x squared. Okay, so now I know f double prime of one is negative one. So our parabola, our tangent parabola is approximately equal to our function. Oops, that's not supposed to be a C, it's supposed to be a one, sorry. Okay. Switch over. Back to here. So if we zoom in at one really super closely, holy cow, we got to zoom way in. Man, they look like they're the same thing, don't they? The parabola, the line, and the curve. But as we zoom out further and further, we start to see a little bit more difference here. So the curve is in red, the parabola is in green, the line is in blue. And notice how much more closely as we get further from one, the parabola matches the natural log graph. 